meet three powerful leaders who are giving their all every day in the service of the impact that they want to create, that they want to make in the world through their companies. And yet they are stuck and not making as much progress as they would like. They feel like they are leaving a lot of potential on the table. So they got together on a power hour with me to get my direct, honest and often provocative coaching to help them unlock doors of possibilities that they are not even seeing right now, but it is right in front of them. My name is Somit Gupta and I am the founder of the Deploy Yourself School of Leadership. And I have helped hundreds of leaders and entrepreneurs surprise themselves by what they can do and achieve. So fasten your seat belt for the next 40 to 50 minutes as you are most likely dealing with the same challenges as these three share procrastination, making the right decision, looking for validation and creating a strong leadership team. A few minutes today can be more powerful than a few weeks or months otherwise. And that is why the name is Power Hour. So in this Power Hour, pause and rewatch any segment multiple times if you think that is relevant to you. If you find it insightful for your situation, this is not content or TV. So I invite you to listen to this without any distractions and multitasking. Listen to me like I am directly talking one-on-one -on -one with you. Or do not listen because you will otherwise dilute the value that you can get out of watching. As you are watching, ask yourself the same question that I am asking one of these leaders and constantly listen with the lens of how can I apply this in my life today. This is my gift to you and the ideas and the questions that I share in this video with these three people are not just something which I am pulling out of thin air. They are coming from my experience of doing this day in and day out for the last four years. So bring your best listening to this. And if you have an insight after watching this, then reach out and share that with me. It makes a world of difference to me and my team when we hear positive stories of impact from you. So I want to start by welcoming you all and making uh, like making this time, uh, being on time and making this time from your schedule. Uh, and I want to specify something, right? That this is not going to be like a training or a webinar or a discussion. This is actually going to be exactly and entirely focused on you. So when I'm talking to one of you, it's going to be entirely focused on you, the challenge that you are facing right now that you bring to the table and everything that you're dealing with right now. And you will see that, right? Which also means that uh, there will be a lot of emphasis on listening rather than speaking. Everything that that happens today, the power of that is, is, is not in what I am sharing or what I'm going to share. The power of that is going to be in your listening. And what I mean by that is, is that how you listen to me my questions and also to each other today is going to make the biggest difference uh, for you. Uh, so if, if I'm talking to any one of you, forget that there is anybody else in the room. Uh, for everybody else, listen to whoever I am talking to, listen to that I am asking the same question to you. Right? To try to see if I am asking the same question to you, how would you answer? Even though I'm not talking to you directly, that's um, a way of listening, which I would invite you to bring in to make the maximum value out of uh, this one hour. The second thing is uh, like to be willing to be challenged, to be willing to give me permission to speak freely and directly without sugarcoating and to be willing to listen to that without getting defensive, to listen uh, to, to that, especially if it is a perspective which is different from uh, what you believe in or if it is pointing in a direction which you are not used to seeing. Uh, so then to stay with me rather than like brushing it aside. Uh, and my invitation to, to all of you uh, would be to use whatever works for you and ignore what does not work for you. And many times we get stuck on what we don't like, what we don't believe, what we don't appreciate. And we tend to miss out even if there is something was insightful or valuable. So to use what works for you and then ignore and let go of anything else rather than getting stuck in it. Perfect. So who wants to go first? Go first means what? How do you want Yes, to? yes. So I am assuming you you volunteered. Now you have volunteered. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so go first for me means uh, start by sharing uh, very briefly who you are. Okay. Uh, and then what is your challenge? And how do you see that you are coming in your own way? Right. right. So we will obviously unpack this, but so very yeah. briefly start by sharing that. Sure. So I'll start. So I'm Dheeraj Ahuja and I'm based in Delhi and running this startup called Skills Connect Global. We are a tech aggregator for various HR services provided in the country and provide the HR services to employers. And I launched this about in 2018, but I think we actually went live three years back after the first wave of COVID was over. And I've been trying to grow this. We got initial good success, but since about a year or so, since funding winter hit most hard, so we have reeling under it, but we are sustaining, growing steadily since then. And it's a matter of uh, chance that I uh, started this because life took me to a certain direction after 20 years of work. And I found this calling to be my current mainstay. So that's in a brief. I think we'll share more as we go along. Yeah. So what's what's your challenge, Zeeraj? And uh, oh, how challenge. do you think? Yeah. How do you think you are you're coming in your own way? So I think my, my challenge is procrastination. Uh, I think is a big challenge. And I think I did mention that I had a query or rather a challenge to overcome, which was uh, when to let go. And I think procrastination is the at the foundation of it. When to let go. <laughs> So mm-hmm. that's the challenge. Yeah. So who else faces a procrastination? Me too. Yeah. yeah. I think Dira, that's a very human thing, right? So uh, can you share what is procrastination stopping you from moving forward or achieving? I think it's stopping me to take the second wildest decision of my life. <laughs> First one being the skills connect. <laughs> so I'm just looking at, uh, should I take the next big decision? And I'm trying to... In my mind, I, I know what needs to be done, but I think I'm just either procrastinating it knowingly or unknowingly for the fear of unknown or maybe just I don't care. So these are the only things which I... So can you share like what specifically is that second decision and then what's the fear behind that? The second decision is that because of the prolonged funding winter and my wish to scale my startup, which I've always been used to in my corporate job. So that decision... I'm the decision to invest personally in every sense of the word, whether my efforts, my funds, my network to put it uh, behind the station, decision to grow. Should I do it or not is the challenge which I'm currently procrastinating. Uh, basically. Hmm. I can very well do it and I can very well ignore it rather or not do it, but I'm delaying that decision. And uh, what's the fear or the dilemma there? The fear is whether this will work out obviously or not because now I have much better information behind me but not the perfect information. So the mm. fear of uh, unknown in putting it all the second time will this lead to the, the required success which I'm hoping for or not is that the that's a, that's a fear. Yeah, yeah. And you said earlier right that after working for 20 years you found a calling right something like that. Can right. you share what was that motivation on or calling behind starting this? So I've been fairly successful thankfully in the jobs and I've built uh, businesses from grounds up literally from zero to very large scales. So that and I've done it multiple times over. So after the third or fourth time in a company, I realized that when I can do it for the companies and do it so well, why don't I do it for myself? And the opportunity came into my lap in a pseudo entrepreneurship come job sort of an opportunity. And I found that to be a good platform to launch myself and, and I did eventually and I raised funds and I've got a decent clientele, decent network, decent uh, business going but I think the scale is where I'm starting. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So we had a short conversation yesterday and I shared something with you Dheeraj and I want to share the same thing and see how you can relate on that but I want you to listen to it like, like you're listening to it for the first time. Okay. Right. So when you started this right, the, even that was a risk. Correct. Right. No matter how much success you have had in the past, when you have an idea and especially a business idea or a startup idea, there is no way you can predict what will happen in the future Mm. or which direction it will go. Yes. Right. So the same doubt which you said, right, procrastination is is like showing up for right now has also been true when you started. Correct. Right. And probably has also been true in your previous career. Right. Even if you are in a corporate job or if you're doing whatever you're doing, there is no guarantee of uh, something working out the way you expect it to. I agree. Right. So what you shared about procrastination, I think to me, it it appears like like you're playing uh, not to lose rather than playing to win. 
thing right and if you follow any game or sports uh, there is a very different energy uh, when you play to to win yeah. versus playing playing not to lose mm-hmm. and and there is nothing right and wrong about it right one thing which i want all of you to listen in whatever i might share is to uh, not see this as a right and wrong thing right just see this as two options and to see where am i playing and what can i shift but i'm not trying to say that it's wrong right procrastination as you as we just saw that it's a human thing i face it i'm sure wasuki faces it it's every human being uh, you know faces it as long as they are being honest to themselves so there's nothing wrong or bad about it right but at the same time we do get caught up in the day to day and we forget that we actually start playing not to lose uh, versus uh, playing to win mm. so for you right if you start playing to win what might happen like what might what could be some possible scenarios i win that's a very clear possible scenario or i win but not as much as i wanted to hmm. so when is when is certain i'm i can see that it's not a losing game and i think win or lose is against a certain target you have in mind so i think that the target uh, is where i am trying to figure out is it worth my time and should i just go all out to win now And, yeah. and I think I quite quantified the target also to you today that this is very minimum which I want. So yeah, I don't. I think I don't need any convincing about going all out to win. I think uh, it's just mm. really focusing. Uh, yeah. What yeah. So and it's conversation has been good. I think today was a different energy, no doubt. Yeah. So, yeah. And and can you see the cost of uh, playing not to lose? Can you see the cost of that? Yeah, cost is very clear. <laughs> cost is very high, of course. Uh, I don't want to repent it after some time saying that I should have gone all out. Yeah. Hmm. So I think you have a clear decision, right? Hmm. You have a clear decision. Yes. When do you? When will you make that decision? No, I've done it after the call yesterday. I thought about it for half an hour, and so I said, hmm. "Let's go all out. That's okay." Okay. So thank you for sharing that first of all, and I want to add something, right? So many of us, so being a leader is really somebody's uh, first career, right? We don't study to be a leader. Hmm. We study to be like an engineer, a doctor. You know, accountant or something else right and there is one difference which i see between uh, like any traditional career path uh, versus being uh, uh, a leader and i want to highlight that because i think it's it's also relevant to what you're sharing and it will be valuable to all of you uh, and i will just use an example of uh, being an engineer uh, so if i am an engineer right i i have to have confidence in my skills before i can uh, promise you something Right. So if you ask me, can you build software or can you build a bridge? I cannot just like anybody cannot promise you that. They need to have skills. They need to have a team. Maybe they might need to have funding. So there is some preparation and there are some resources which are required in a traditional analytical way of thinking before you can actually go out and make a commitment, make a promise out there. However, leadership I think is very different. Like right? leadership is always about making a commitment first. and if you are waiting for confidence or if you are waiting for the right time or the right resources you will always be waiting mm. and once again nothing wrong with that like this is i'm not sh- sharing this to criticize you or to put you into like guilt or blame not nothing like that but simply to see that leadership always starts by saying that i want this and then i will find the resources right so it's it's not about i have the resources but i will be resourceful Mm. uh and it's also not about uh, the right time right uh when the market turns up when i get more confident when i have this team or that team but also how can i be decisive right now mm right because right now is the only place where you can actually take action mm. and not in the future not in the past mm. so leadership always starts with commitment and which is very different from like our traditional educational model that we gather resources and then we say let's do this and even though like we you all of you have like started companies many times it is easy so easy to fall back into that mindset uh, that i need something to move forward rather than i like i move forward and then i will create those things right so one is relying on something else something external and the second is relying on my ability to shift whatever is required to find a way and can you relate to that right dheeraj or anybody else wants to share I think no. I'm just absorbing what you said. Yeah. It, uh, no, it, it it makes it does make some sense. Like what Dheeraj also pointed out, like 
how you make this and then and what you said felt right that we have only like we can only make the decision in today right and then it, it makes things a lot more clearer that if you can only play today then you play the way you want to play today absolutely yeah so seva maybe you want to go ahead with like with who you are what is your challenge sure. and uh, how are you coming in your own way okay yeah i run an e-commerce company we sell plants and gardening products from our own website we started 4 years ago so we just started during the covid and so we have a team of around 70 people and we do close to 500 orders per day pan india and so my challenge is that as my team is growing i feel that like i i still want to decide when is the right time to outsource certain part of my business so when i say that like when i say outsource maybe when can i give out my warehouse to a company and how should i approach it or like should i really do it or not like how how do we make those kind of decisions hmm. so is, is it about right now is it about outsourcing the, like the warehousing and stuff like that yeah so we have customer support then small hr team and because what i feel is as we are growing i will have only so much influence at the bottom right so does it really make much sense to still own that team in house and run it as your own or maybe find people who can do it for you but i don't mm. know how do you really decide that yet. yeah yeah and i'm assuming right now it's all in house it's all in house that's it yes okay okay and how long have you been pondering over this question how long has this been on your mind so last 6 uh, to 8 months as the scale is in, uh, so now we have close to 10000 square feet warehouse and as this by the end of this year we see that it will be double the size and then when i'm thinking about it it's like i'm gradually feeling that should i really be getting into so much of logistics or should i just like figure out something else yeah yeah and, and like this itself is quite unique right what you're doing gardening uh, can you share like, like do you have a, like a background in this like how did this start what's uh, what was the like the motivation the trigger for this sure so actually i wanted to i graduated as a mechanical engineer but i always wanted to do something into sustainability but after graduation i joined an oil and gas company which was starkly opposite but then fucking four years in corporate i felt that i i wanted to do something else and from there i joined my friend's startup so that that was my first journey into startups they were building an electric scooter so he's my college senior so this there's this company called ather who are into electric scooters so mm-hmm. i was the chief battery design engineer for them but like but then i really liked it how startups are working but again i thought that here things are working great i should be taking up challenge which is even more more difficult so then i partnered with another friend we started a dairy venture that is like almost 200 crores company now so while doing that i felt that there was a requirement because a lot of people came to us and they were asking for gardening products also because we used to do farm events so then i felt that we should do this but then my partner said that we should not dilute the brand for uh, for milk products and what i realized was that in like a lot of people want to do gardening but cost becomes a big factor for them and i feel that if everyone does little in their house towards reducing the pollution then it will be so nice right and that's what has had been my motivation all my life that i i want to do something in sustainability so that's how like the whole thing eventually fell into this mm-hmm. now we are doing research on algae and we are trying to develop in house small algae plants also that will even capture much more carbon dioxide absolutely so i can already see right there were two major decision points for you right one is when you uh move from uh, oil and gas and your mechanical background to the friends startup and the second is when you actually like started your own company right how did you made those decisions how did you decide like what these the right or appropriate decisions to make i think it was just like it was there in the back of my mind that i have to take like i should be doing this and then like it just one day you decide that i'll now i'm doing this and then the next day yeah. like you start moving towards yeah so so with your original question around uh, outsourcing or not right can i share something i think which which sure. kind of connects with your previous decisions right 
so when you say right when you say, when you ask a question like when is the right time or what is the right decision um you're looking for like right or wrong you're looking for like what is the right way or wrong way and once again right i will use the the same metaphor like if i am an engineer yes there is a right way to do something but especially when you're doing something unique you're doing something for the first time uh what i want to share that maybe there is no right and wrong way so that like the question itself is is like there is no value in answering the question either way right uh, what is more valuable with a question like that and we all get stuck in these questions right what should we do here or there right this or that so beyond a certain point right so you said 6 or 8 months it has been and you can spend maybe the next 2 years also deliberating over that but in the end it will come down to a single decision and no matter how much preparation you have done you cannot forecast how that decision will pan out right in yeah. leadership in yeah. especially in entrepreneurship what i have found is what is more valuable is taking a decision rather than looking for a right and wrong decision and then since you are the decision maker right it's very important to realize that you are the decision maker like you are not trapped by a decision if you take a decision it doesn't mean that it's a prison it always means that you can change course in the future right and as you said right you probably took those two decisions the early decisions if you were to ask probably yourself like what is the right and wrong maybe the answer would be this is not the right decision for your career for like the from a reasonable state uh mm-hmm. so i w- i would say like if you if you really listen to your heart if you really listen to your gut what what do you think you should do right now outsource or not especially about the housing i, think I, should, I, I yeah. think I should outsource like <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 and i i, I think because... there, there is this lightness and uh, smile in in your See, because i i feel that it's taking so much energy that i should be putting on better things and it's just daily operations that i'm being part of yeah. so i definitely <laughs> Yeah. Yes and I'm sure you have done your homework like it's not like you're totally blank and you're just choosing something yeah, yeah. I'm sure you have done your homework and like done a little bit of pros and cons but beyond a certain point it just sucks up not just time but also your energy and especially if you like you said you're a 70 people uh, team right um, mm-hmm. so it, it yeah. your energy dictates everybody else's energy also so for me like it it's like you just made the decision and then move forward and then Two months down the line, or one month down the line, or two years down the line, you can always change course. That sure. that's, that's what it. like entrepreneurship is. So, what do you see here? What are you taking away from this uh, conversation? Uh, I, I I think yeah, I was talking to some vendors already. So maybe I'll like I'll at least put more heart into it because uh, like so far I was in in the dilemma that uh, whether I should do it or not, hmm. right and. maybe i'll just take a plan figure then yeah yeah so thank you thank you so much shivam for as you're looking for the validation behind you right that yes. someone just says and do it right so i think that's that's where i was at yes and and once again right once again right there is nothing wrong with that but you want to just see that that if you can't validate your no amount of external validation can fill that hole right so even if let's say you ask somebody advice and you know, like that person is very respected and they tell you that uh, do not outsource and because of that validation or that authority you make that decision it will continue to keep on uh, like show up for you if you if your gut says i should do that you cannot be at peace with that either you completely choose one way or the other way uh, but external validation is only good when you internally first of all are like trusting yourself and saying that whatever i choose yeah. rather than i choose because like, something else or somebody else yeah yeah sure yeah. yeah so thank you so before before i come to you sandeep right i want to share another metaphor so if you see any game or any sports uh, there are players who are playing the game uh, and then there are spectators who are watching that game if you notice the players they are having a very different kind of communication than the spectators see if you look at the spectator they will pass opinions uh, they will uh, do should and should not like he should have done that i know what they should have done what should not have done and they have explanations for everything like this did not work because 
like this player is not here so they have explanations for everything they have a lot of opinions about how things go and also their life is like high and low right if their team is winning they are on a high but if their team is losing they are on a low at the same time they have no power to influence the real game right so they are actually spectators like literally they are spectators they are watching the game and if you see players right their conversations is very crisp let's do this you do this i want to do this let me do this like what should we do but not in deliberation you there might be like a little deliberation but in the end you have to act right so there is no space for procrastination for a player there is no space for overthinking you might think but you have to act and the important thing is to realize that the game only moves forward by the action of the player not by the action of the spectator no matter what the spectator is no matter how valuable they are no matter how much they know no matter how accurate they are as long as they are spectator they cannot influence the game um and i'm sharing this with you because right all of you are in the game right in the end you want your company to be successful you want to produce results short term long term all of that and how many times when we use language when we communicate to ourselves as well as with our team we become spectators in our own lives we become spectators in the game that we are playing uh, and no matter how much deliberation you might do on the like right or wrong what should we do or not that has no impact on the game the only thing which will have an impact on the game is actually doing it or going one way or the other uh, and then dealing with the situation right so the player might think let me apply this strategy for the next 5 minutes and that might backfire and they have to adapt uh, but there is no nothing happening in the head right spectator only lives in their head it's it's all thinking uh, and that sucks up time right so the player conversation is very precise right it doesn't take a lot of time uh, the the spectator conversation is long that sucks up time uh, that also sucks up energy because you can't do anything about it Uh, so i just want to want you to see that like how many times that we fall back into conver- talking about our own like uh, companies of one our own life uh, like spectators rather than taking the decision that is ours to make uh, and i share this simply as like as a pointer that the moment you realize you can actually switch back to becoming a player and say let me take the decision and let me see what happens tomorrow rather than trying to think how do i deal with what happens tomorrow if i do this if i do this if i do this yeah so i see a lot of nodding heads so i am hoping this makes sense and sandeep do you want to start by maybe sharing who you are what is your challenge and how are you coming in your own way sure okay i'm sandeep i'm founder of great drop sparky labs uh, we are into it services specifically in software testing and test automation and we have definitely created a niche in life sciences but we are still struggling to establish or define our market not only geography but everything whether we should stick to only life sciences or venture into other verticals as well and we are right now 40 team strong and definitely we started 5 years back but as neeraj mentioned actual operation started post covid we had a team of 11 but then we had to downsize it and now we are back and i think my biggest challenge right now is we are in orbit 1 and it is s curve but we are at the plateau of s curve and to get into next orbit i think what i have learned from my experience and others as well is i have to make sure that i am establishing good systems processes KRAs so that my team knows what their role is and what they should be working on next so that i get out of this micromanagement and losing my focus on strategic initiatives and focusing on anything that i my attention is not required mm. and because of that i am overworking or meaning feeling burnout and then i'm not getting enough time to focus on sales which i should be doing and there is also procrastination whether i should do sales and whether i sh- would be able to scale that past so there is in it service there is always chicken and egg problem that you have 
when you have sales, you won't have resources. When you have resources, you won't have sales. And right now, IT services definitely struggling across industry. Uh, so that's adding to the fuel. Uh, adding fuel to this uh, problem that we have. Mm. Um, so that's where I am at. Yeah. And how do you think you are coming in your own way? I think I am hanging in there. I am also procrastinating a lot of times. I think I ponder on a lot of problems that I have every day. I get little time to think about things when I'm actually working on between multiple meetings. Um, but I think uh, to get to next level, I need a very strong leadership team, good systems, processes, KRAs, objectives. Um, and I think I should focus more on sales. That's what need to be done. Hmm. Uh, but I know what to be done, but then uh, I'm always in a yeah. hurry to get things covered. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think is the biggest bottleneck or like the one thing that you need to start doing to start creating that like that team of leaders around you? Right? You need people who can own up and probably take up responsibility like you have been doing so that you can separate out a little bit and focus on what you said, right? The sales or the other strategy stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think have, I have to be very ruthless about prioritization. What I should be focusing on first. A lot of people, events, and situations eating up a lot of my time. I should uh, delegate that. And I'm very bad at delegation because I'm a core engineer. So I focus on a lot of engineering stuff that I should not be doing. I should rather let my team take the decisions and do their own. I will struggle through their technological problems. So whenever I see technology challenges rather than somebody else, I jump onto it. I should be doing something else, right? Sales, strategy, pitches, whatever it is. Yeah. But I should discipline myself not to do that. Mm. Yeah. I'm glad you use the word delegation. And probably if you go out with this challenge, like this is maybe the top advice that you will get. Uh, this is found in every book. This is, you will hear people speak. However, right, I would like to share something more than the doing, the energy behind something. Delegation is is like the, the word feels disempowering. Right? If somebody says I'm delegating something to you, it, it's, it almost feels like I'm like, I, I'm putting something which I don't want to do. I'm giving it to you. And it's a both ways, right? So it, it's uh, when you're delegating to somebody, you don't, it's, there's a sense of ickiness about it. And what, what I want to create a distinction is between delegation and creating leaders, right? So whenever you are delegating, yeah. because of the word delegation and what it means for people, it's almost like there is no responsibility there. And it, it, for you, it's like I'm handing off something. And for the other person, it's like something is being thrusted upon me. Right. While the, what I'm sharing is creating leaders, which is like, if you talk to somebody, you uh, like a way to approach somebody would be like, I see you as more capable and taking uh, a bigger role or bigger responsibility that you are taking. And to do that, can you take on this pie of my shoulders or can you do that so that I can then focus on taking the organization in the future direction, which will help me, but which will also help you because you are also part of this organization. Uh, right. This gives the other person autonomy, first of all. And we all like autonomy, right? We all like to say yes and no, right? If I give you an ice cream and say, eat this ice cream, you will not like it. But if I like, give you a choice, do you want chocolate or vanilla? You will choose one and then you will like it. True. Whether it, even if it is the same flavor. So delegation has that, like that I have no choice. But when you say creating leaders, that is something which you can do in every moment. So whether you are uh, working with somebody, in every moment, either you are lifting somebody up or you're diminishing somebody. And again, I'm not saying you're doing it consciously or you're doing it like as something right and wrong. Everybody, every founder goes through that journey in that phase, right? What you're describing, that you're too busy in the day to day and you want to, you have to step out. There is no way other than that that the company will continue to grow. Okay. And I want you to see like every day, there are so many opportunities for creating leaders and delegation fights that. And when you create leaders, when you think about creating leaders, you will also find those people who are not supposed to be leaders, but who are not willing to become leaders. 
and that is also a decision which you want to be aware of and make sooner rather than later and again nothing wrong with with that or with any particular person but different growth phases requires for different skills and different kind of people and many time delegation is just like one word which is thrown around and but we don't see that we are just missing the whole point that it's it's not about delegation it's about creating people who can own up like you have been owning so far and then making then taking a step back here yeah. so what do you see for yourself there i have to make sure that while delegating i have good team here who is capable enough to take a lot of burden off my shoulder so when i'm delegating i have to make sure that they know what is being delegated and they are hold responsible and then i'm helping them at every step until a certain point and then of they go they should do it on focus i've been doing that for establishing my own sales and marketing team and i had this experience that you last mentioned about having not so good leaders i won't say bad but not so good leaders so i had i had this i may quote an example uh 15 years guy who had taken a break about 5 6 years sabbatic career he wanted to come back so i gave him a chance to be a manager at my firm and then i delegated establishing this process in that i was talking mm. you come up with we everybody knows what they are doing and they have processes in their head so just take that out and start building a documentation and publishing that but this guy messed it up he didn't even create one document after a month i was following up and i kept asking but then it never fall through next month i had to ask him what else would you like to do in my organization because hmm. in growing organization there are so many roles like would you like to become a people manager project manager he picked up one and then he messed up that as well because maybe it was not fitting it coming from a big company is it coming back to work could have been a little different than what he used to be yeah. so that we have to let him go just today so hard decisions firing decisions i have learned this in my five years entrepreneurship journey that you should not delay them if the person has to be get down the bus then you should let him out as soon as possible yeah yeah so thank you this is yeah. difficult yeah thank you thank you so we'll do a round of sharing before we close this call so dheeraj do we do you want to start with like what do you take away from not from like your sharing but also from what others shared with me and what do you think you will you're going to do differently going forward i think i totally relate to what sandeep mentioned i think he's in the same boat as i was uh though i have slightly more experience to uh, realize what he's doing uh, there's nothing wrong i think it's natural for any leader to go through that route and i think same with shivam in terms of continuing building internally or outsourcing i've done multiple outsourcing in my jobs and convince successfully my management to just outsource and grow rapidly because i think the the knowledge in the head of an able person is far more valuable than using that ability to just focus on transactions so i think it's a no brainer i think i'm pretty clear i think in my case more than the procrastination being driven by the fear of unknown it right, was also at some level a comfort factor i think i'm among the eldest among all of you so at back of my mind i know that it's for also time for me to also invest in what i really wanted to do all my life i think slogged it for last 25 years so there were certain hobbies and passions which i which were always at the back of the plans because you never had time to do it when you were earning and going so i'm pursuing them as well so while i was talking to you yesterday night and even now these things were coming to my mind why am i procrastinating is it is it back only or something else too which i really want to pursue so i think it's a mix of both but having yeah. said so the winning winning streak and the fire is very much burning it's not doused it's just that i've been more uh, i i believe that i've been more more aware and more wiser rather than just following a rat race and just mad growth and whatever i think i just also want to balance it out but i think still i think if what i'm doing is important it's a good venture i i believe there's a lot of value in it so i'll go all out i think I, i'm going to hold back yeah 
perfect yeah i think i am i can see a different energy from like from yesterday or even when you started mm-hmm. this call today so go for it and as you said right if so that thinking itself right is bringing to awareness other yeah. things which matter to you yeah and that's very important because now you can make a choice and right. yeah there are, there are no right and wrong choices right there is just choice i agree i agree right uh, and then you yeah, choose and then you also i must also sorry i must add also that i think i see this intervention uh, that has been brought about by vasuki is a dot in the journey that i will look tomorrow in future that would happen mm. perfect perfect thank you thank you dheeraj shivam do you want to go next yeah like i i think the last words that dheeraj said really helped because like he when he said it's a no brain and it, it felt so relieving again <laughs> <laughs> but then i related with what sandeep was also saying that and the challenges that he faced with delegation so i i i think similar journey like like again i related a lot with what he was doing but yeah i i think uh, this really helps that you hear that the, the problems are similar like my domain may be very different from what both sandeep and dilaj are doing but they also have people issue they also have sales issues and other things so i think the way the whole conversation when it really helped it really helped at least clear things out in the mind that you are not alone you are not doing it yes. just for yourself yes yeah and and shivam i think a wonderful point around like that delegation or outsourcing and one thing which i want to add is that right creating leaders means that you do not uh, put yourself on a lower pedestal to somebody so if you are outsourcing something you still decide your conditions of satisfaction like out if somebody is more experienced more smarter that doesn't mean that they decide what to do and you have to adjust to that you decide and you choose your outsourcing partner based on your conditions right so you still retain your leadership role you don't say that okay now you know better so you tell me and i will adjust you you say i want this and then okay mm-hmm. then you might negotiate but you do not give yeah. up your leadership position right delegation is 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 very different outsourcing even that word outsourcing is like they just handing off something um, but we are talking about leadership here and no matter whether you do delegation or outsourcing you do not give up your leadership position otherwise it will bite you in the future so even with outsourcing or anything you decide the conditions of satisfaction right you it's like if you're playing cricket like you can't nobody can just play and come on the field and start playing football it has to be cricket so you if yeah. somebody is playing with you you decide yeah. the terms and conditions So thank you for adding that. Sure. So Sandeep over to you maybe to close uh, a few minutes to you. Yeah, thank you. I think I've learned both from Shivam Dheeraj and you so that like the analogy of being in the game, right? And when you are playing, you definitely are thinking very differently. And when I when I procrastinate or look at people doing something which they should not be doing and focusing on the task that they are assigned to. Uh, I do pass the same comments that <laughs> spectators uh, might have been passing. Um, and when I uh, look at my journey and what I should be delegating or outsourcing, uh, now I am very clear that I would rather outsource engineering than sales. Mm-hmm. Right? That's what I would be focusing on. That's what I would take it from here. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you Sandeep and uh, thank you everybody. I think more than anything I would like to thank you to listen to me, listen to each other attentively and not get distracted, right? Because distraction is all around us and and we don't realize how much of an impact that makes when we are with other people. Simply being with them fully present can has a huge impact, especially as leaders. Like a lot of this is relationship building whether right. you're talking to your employees or to your partners, but to simply be present and listen fully can have sometimes a bigger impact than whatever tactics or decisions that you're making so i want to thank you for that yeah. and yeah i think i think that sounds like a wonderful place to to close this close this hour and as, as i said 5 minutes to spare wonderful yeah. thanks for doing this absolutely absolutely and certainly dheeraj sandeep and shivam all of you i think what you're doing is already out of the ordinary and you need to see that right and and then you need to see where you forget that in your day to day and then simply remind yourself that that is something to be proud of rather than to go into like procrastination or self doubt that is something to be proud upon and if you bring that pride it will make whatever decision or whatever challenge easier no matter what the decision is 